Here we are in part two. I now have to hack this off. Probably here-ish. And then rebuild it. And I have to make, it's not gonna be too difficult. It's basically a flat piece of steel just cut through there. I basically put the bottom bit back on it. And then I can put the piece I made in the other video there and then I can rebuild this and put that back on and then we can put the other on and then that'll be it that'll be it's fairly straightforward um yeah so all I gotta do is uh whoops uh well I don't know how I'm gonna actually do this because it's in a bit of a less than ideal location it's French for location <laughs> um Find out those spot welds because I'm gonna have to belt sand them or something just because there's no way in hell you're gonna be able to drill them out. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah, that's just it. Um, keep watching. I swear I have bought a new camera stand, it is coming so I can stop using. The sack truck bog tin camera, old camera stand for doing this. When I have the next one, I'll be able to actually do things a bit better and get some better views and, ah, uh, you know what I mean. But yeah, um, you work with what you got and what I got ain't much. So, just gonna, this is what we'll be looking at and we'll uh, zip that out and keep watching. Um, there we have it, fairly straightforward, and I've always said this, taking, what's the take, um, when you're removing old parts like this, you know, taking a factory piece of another piece for repair, that is the most time consuming part of a rust repair is actually getting the old rusty crap off. When you're putting the new stuff together, it is not time consuming at all. It's, you know, because it's all clean and lovely. When you're putting old stuff together, or you're taking old stuff apart, jeez, it takes a long time. Because all the welds are rusty and shit. And... So, that gives you a better idea. I was chiseling away and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what the? I thought it was seam sealer. It turned out to be a, a seam of weld. I was like, oh, goody. Goody. Um, yeah, you can see what somebody's done here. I will probably repair this piece because this, the shapes in here look a bit interesting. Because I know from looking at it that somebody got these pieces and welded them in from another Falcon. Like, they're not homemade pieces because it's very difficult to make shapes like that uh, well and of course you know you can just tell and probably done when you could get parts for one of these so I'll probably you know I'll chuck this through the sandblaster see how bad it really is and then I'll work with what I've got to make it look way better than that when it goes back in um, then I'll fix up all of that and when I was talking about reducing it down to its basic shapes, because now you look at that, that's the inside, it's just a flat piece of steel. Especially if you, see so it doesn't look too bad here actually. So I could straighten that up and probably put a section under the bottom of these pressings and put a piece in about two inches wide that comes in and goes up. Um, and I'll put those holes in it. That's a bit of an odd one too. Um, shouldn't be too hard though. Um, so yeah. You see this panel wasn't pressed properly when it was new. If you see this little circle on every panel that, that Ford make, that's how their indicator tells you that they were fully stamped. So if that's not a full circle, 
uh, that means it wasn't crushed to its maximum um, thingy, which means it's not not guaranteed to be 100%. But when that's a full circle, it is 100%. Useless trivia about falcons. Did I cut that? I think I may have. I think I missed that. When I take that piece off, I'll have to another look. See if I made a boo boo. It's possible. I am only human. Amazing how much better to do videos and your finger doesn't cover the camera lens. Unbelievable. Now we're at the back of my workshop in what I like to think is the dumping ground for all the offcuts and rubbish. Now I'm just paint stripping the 40 tonne of sealer off this piece because as you go to sandblast it, you just sandblast is like, ah, is that sealer? That's nice. I'm not coming off. So yeah, you have to sort of get it off some way. Yeah, I was talking about Epitech in a video ages ago. That's been lying outside in the rain. Getting on a month now. Only where it's thin, and I beat the crap out of it with a hammer, is it going rusty. That's had direct rainfall, as you can see there's a bucket next to it full of water. That's been in the rain, hasn't gone rusty. Except obviously where it was bare metal. So that's when I was talking about how good Epitech is. Um, so these are left the bits from the other ute that died. Anybody needs a dash frame for an XY, sing out. Oh. This is going to be some bits from this are going into the ute when I get back to that. This is how I painted the spoiler too. I welded up a trestle. With some square tubes and bolted the spoiler to the top of it so I could paint it. So that's the like, same with when I'm painting buffer bars and stuff like that. I'll chop up the square tube and re weld it in different shapes so it makes it easier to paint certain things. So, yes, there's the yuck. So, after sandblast, uh, well, not sandblasting, after dipping this in some paint stripper and then sandblasting. We can see that, gee, this guy really, 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 really enjoyed overlapping stuff. Uh, oh, I'm about to sneeze, I can feel it. I can feel it in my loins. <laughs> Bless me. Bless you, child. Whew, dusty. Uh, so, I think I'm going to grind down this world cut it along there, trim off, well as I cut it, that piece will, which is the old overlap piece, will fall off, re-weld it so it's smooth, no joins, nothing overlapped, and then I will rebuild it, we'll zoom out slightly, so it's not in your face, and then I'll rebuild this edge, uh, and then I'll put a piece of copper or brass behind there, and I'll weld it up because there's no point making a whole piece for that. Repair this edge and sort of go Wah! it back into the car. Now, if you're playing along at home, you'll notice I've done exactly what I said I was going to do. I'm just going to run it through the sandblaster a little bit more just to get that surface rust off that was underneath that little lip. So I've run it through the, I've cut it. And uh, when I blast it, I'll clean it up a bit better. And then I will re weld that so it's smooth and doesn't have anything overlapped. I'll grind out all that garbage that's in there so that I have one piece again. Uh, you might go, wow, you're going to do a lot of effort, but um, it's kind of my job to do it properly. I don't want to, I literally won't do it if somebody says, if somebody says, oh, I just want to do a shonky, well, go somewhere else. I don't want to deal with it. Do it properly or don't do it. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, looks nice. Uh, I'll just talk through this. So this is my sandblast. This is a one that you can get from a place in Adelaide called, called Total Tools. It's one of the cheapest ones of these getting around. Uh, for the American chums, this should look familiar because you can get that from Harbour Freight, I believe. Um, this was 
$389 from Total Tools. I've modified it slightly. I changed the pickup tube uh, due to a, a, a helpful video that somebody made on YouTube, which made it beautiful. Also added these uh, downlights in it because the light that you get in it is just garbage. Like it's, it's screwed within five minutes and doesn't shine. These are cheap as like eighteen dollars for the light and the housing, and it's got a plug on it. Cheap as buggery. Two of those in there. They got a rubber seal on. They got the screw in. Um, fitting so they never get to set up. I mean, the lenses get etched, but they've been in there for nine months and psh, piece of cake. The only thing I recommend is you continuously don't forget to keep buying the the sacrificial lens on the inside, otherwise, you will only have one shot at using your thing because these get etched pretty fast. And inside of the gun, bloody hard to see, but there's a brass fitting in there that holds this onto here and the sand coming up here will wear a hole in it as it's done on this twice uh, so I obviously have an oxy torch and I just brazed it back up and then re-drilled the hole through it but yeah those wear out too because you end up it'll pump air down the pickup tube so when it stops working that's your problem so there we have it a table full of metal filings and yeah still gotta grind it out a bit more but no longer overlapped it will look in, when it goes in, it will be perfect, it will look like it's meant to be there. And tomorrow, or in the next video, I will make a fold and stretch it around the corner. Put the bottom on, then go to the car and put the new piece in, put this back in, put the other piece in, and then slap on the quarter panel. You might go, why is there so many... Why is this video for doing this repair going to be like this? It's, I said I was going to do this one fairly in depth. So going to a lot of detail for what I do. I could just go, oh look, I'm done. Um, but some people want to know how much effort's involved in going into it with some detail. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this part. Um, like, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching.